Welcome to the Illinois Association for College Admission Counseling Virtual College Fair. Thank you so much for joining us today. A few housekeeping announcements before we get started. You may use the Q&A button on your screen to type your questions to our presenters at any time. You don't have to save your question until the presenter is talking. If you have questions for any of our institutions today, go ahead and use that Q&A function. Your camera and microphone are off so the panelists cannot see or hear you. This is one of many different sessions happening. We have another session happening right after today's event. So be sure to sign up for that last session after this if there's institutions of interest afterwards. And this presentation and all of the other presentations for this event are being recorded and will be available within about a week at strivescan.com forward slash Illinois. I'll put that link in the chat as well. But now for our main event, we are going to hear from all of our institutions who are joining us today. And we're going to kick it off with College of St. Benedict and St. John's University, whenever you're ready. Okay, well, I should have practiced sharing my screen because now I can't find my presentation, but that's okay. Uh, my name is Sarah Abraham Renane. I'm an assistant director of admission with the College of St. Benedict and St. John's University in Minnesota. We're located about an hour northwest of Minneapolis St. Paul and have about 3,500 students. So you heard me right. I did say two colleges and with two colleges, that means two of everything. So that's two science centers, two churches, two libraries and double the places to eat. So let me go back to the beginning. St. John's University was founded in 1857 as a school for all men. And just down the road, the College of St. Benedict was founded in 1913 as a school for all women. St. Ben's and St. John's formed, uh, joined forces in the 1960s and together we've been better ever since. So we have about 3,500 students, but we feel a little bit larger than that because of our two campuses. St. Ben's is located in St. Joseph, Minnesota. It's a town with quaint shops and restaurants and just outside of St. Cloud, Minnesota. In St. Cloud, you'll find your 14 screen movie theater, um, Target, Walmart, and chain restaurants. St. John's is an outdoor lover's paradise. So between the two campuses, we share seven lakes, but six of those lakes are on the St. John's campus. There are also 22 miles of trails, a beach, and an arboretum. St. Ben's and St. John's were founded under the Benedictine values. My favorite of these are listening, hospitality, and respect for persons. About 55% of our um, students are Catholic and 45% are not. Our average class size is small. Our average class size is about 19 students. All of our students will undergo some form of experiential learning by the time they graduate. And when I talk about experiential learning, that's anything from internships to clinicals to student teaching to one-on-work -on -work with a professor. Um, outside the classroom, we um, have over 100 clubs and our joint event councils or JEC puts on about 270 events on campus each year. Those are mostly weekend events and can be anything from dances to hypnotists to animal behaviorists to movie nights. There's plenty to see and do at St. Ben's and St. John's. We have a four year residential requirement on campus and the dorms get progressively better as students age in. Most of our juniors and seniors live in apartments and townhouses on campus. For sports, we are NCAA Division III and part of the MIAC conference. Fun fact about St. Ben's and St. John's is St. John's was voted a top 10 venue by Sports Illustrated for football watching. We averaged 10,000 to 12,000 fans a game. Our graduates get results. We annually invite more than 100 different businesses to campus to work with our students each year. These are companies such as Target, which was founded in Minnesota, um, Best Buy, the CFO of Best Buy as a St. Ben's graduate, Medtronic, Deloitte, Touche, and more. St. John's and St. Ben's are the number one and two schools in Minnesota for job placement. So how do you apply? St. Ben's and St. John's operate under rolling admission. Our application is still open. Uh, we will accept applications through either the common application or our own online application. 
Students accepted to St. Ben's and St. John's receive academic awards between 15 and $32,000 a year. Our average student has an ACT of 28 to 33 and a GPA of 33 to 39. Um, it's easy to apply. We just recently went test optional. So all we need is your application and your transcript. We are open to visits, individual visits, and we have special fly-in incentive programs for out-of-state students who are accepted. We will help pay for your flight and a night in a hotel. So come explore our beautiful woods in the land of 10,000 lakes. We'd love for you to join us at St. Ben's and St. John's. Great, well, thank you so much. We are going to transition to our next institution now, which means we are headed to Washington University in St. Louis, whenever you're ready. Awesome, thank you. Um, so good evening, everyone. My name is Easton Knott, uh, Assistant Director of Undergraduate Admission at Washington University. St. Louis. I am also a proud WashU alum in the class of 2012. Here to speak to you a little bit about the school that I've spent most of my life at now as I'm thinking about it as a 30 year old. Um, first and foremost, though, I want to tell you a little bit about the city that we call home, St. Louis. It's in our name. It's very important to us. We're a medium sized city that gives you the best of both a big city and a small town. Beautiful parks, including Forest Park, which is basically our front yard, one of the largest urban parks in the country with a free science center, history museum, a zoo, a beautiful art museum that's actually ranked one of the top two urban parks in the country. So a wonderful place to be as an undergraduate student exploring the city. We're also one of the fastest growing cities for startup companies in the country as well. We want our students to get off campus and engage in the city as much as they can. So we actually give our students free Metro passes, which can take you on the light rail system as well as the bus system. We have two train stops and one bus stop on our campus. So really easy to get downtown to go see the Cardinals play or maybe go to the other side of the park to our medical campus or take it all the way out west to Lambert St. Louis Airport. Now we'll transition back to wash you ourselves. Um, we are First inclusive, collaborative, and creative community. Uh, we have five undergraduate academic divisions, arts and sciences, engineering, business, art, and architecture, as well as three separate graduate divisions in medicine, law, and social work. Our campus represents all 50 states, US territories, and over 50 countries. And this geographic diversity brings with it all forms of diversity, whether it be racial, ethnic, socioeconomic, religious, or political. Because we have so many unique students with their own interests and live experiences, we wanna make sure that we can treat them as the individuals that they are. So this way of thinking leads to our unofficial model, which is to students by name and story. Our community is one that values open, respectful, and honest discussions. And our faculty and staff really challenge students to be engaged in dialogue and to feel comfortable in the uncomfortable. Look at a breakdown of where our students are at the university. Arts and Sciences is by far our largest division, housing the liberal arts um, with the humanities, natural sciences, and social sciences, followed by the McKelvey School of Engineering, the Olin Business School, and then our Colleges of Art and Architecture. Students will choose one of our five divisions as a home base, but the breadth of our university is available to all of our students, regardless of background or initial academic interests, from classes to research, studying abroad and extracurricular activities, students are able to combine their passions into a unique path that best fits who they are. If you're talking about adding on pre-professional interests, things like occupational physical therapy, dentistry, veterinary medicine, or of course our pre-med program, you can do that from any one of our five divisions. In fact, WashU pre-med students have double the national average when it comes to their first year admit rate to medical school, something that we're very proud of. Interdisciplinary study is truly a hallmark here and about 80% of our students will graduate with more than one major. Testament to both our multifaceted students and our extremely flexible curriculum. There actually isn't a university-wide core curriculum, so you have a ton of choices while you're here. We have small discussion-based courses looking for our students to be active members of the learning environment with an average class size of about 26 students. Of course, you're not alone in navigating all of this. We have a wonderful network of advisors to help you with all of these different opportunities. Uh, Four-year, major, minor, pre-professional, residential, student advisors, the list kind of goes on and on and on and on. People here want to make sure your time on our campuses is as good as it can be. 
Additionally, we actually have 11 faculty fellows who live side by side with students in our residential colleges. And you may think, why in the world are faculty living on campus? Well, first of all, our dorms are pretty nice. Uh, we are consistently ranked in the top two in the country in residential living, as well as dining. Um, I gained like 40 pounds in college from eating all the food. It was really good. Um, but also just speaks to how wonderful the community is and how much our faculty want to be a part of our students' lives, not only in the classroom, but out of it as well. We're always encouraging our students to continue to learn outside of the four walls of the classroom. So every single one of our academic majors offers students the ability to study abroad and over 40% of our students choose to do so. As a tier one research institution, we see our students take advantage of the resources around them to pursue their intellectual passions, including using our own Office of Undergraduate Research. Students can own their own business through our student entrepreneurial program or get involved in St. Louis through our Gephardt Institute for Civic and Community Engagement. Our students also have the opportunity to engage in any one of our over 450 plus club organizations with our student union having a 3.5 plus million dollar budget to fund student groups and activities to get you funding to travel to different places or to just get more food at your student group meeting. We have Division Three varsity athletics. We have been one of the top five schools in Division Three over the last few decades with 23 national championships. We have a wide range of other groups. We have an acapella group that is only singing Disney songs. We've got a furniture club. It's a place where you can really come and be yourself, have fun while doing it. We have uh, wonderful traditions on campus like our semi-annual concert series called Wild or our 13 Carnival, which is the largest and oldest student run carnival in the country. A little bit of a snapshot of our incoming class this past year. Uh, we enrolled about 1,800 students with about 28,000 applications. Middle 50% on the ACT is a 33 to a 35, and the SAT is a 1480 to 1560. Now, these numbers are super scored, so we will take multiple scores uh, from students in this process and recalculate a new composite for you. We are test optional, both in this past year as well as moving forward into next year, and so test scores are not going to be required for our students when they apply. We will only need your transcript, two letters of recommendation, all of your extracurriculars, and two essays. Additionally, we have two rounds of early decision, ED1 and ED2, with our deadlines posted here, as well as regular decision. Early decision is binding, so for students that are looking to make that commitment to WashU as the number one choice, it's a wonderful opportunity for them to do so. Additionally, we are a QuestBridge partner school, so students that apply through the QuestBridge match process can do that as well. We are committed to hitting 100% of demonstrated financial need for all of our students. So that has been a commitment for us for many years. We additionally offer a wide range of merit scholarships, both through our different divisions and through a number of signature scholars programs as well, leading from partial all the way through full tuition. That was a lot of information about WashU. Feel free to ask more questions in the Q&A. Great, well, thank you so much, Washington University in St. Louis. We're gonna now hear from Webster University. Take it away. Hi, everybody. It's Andrew Lowey uh, at Webster University. I'm one of the Associate Directors of Admissions here at Webster. I also have a Lemuel Harris with me who's going to keep an eye on the chat and the Q&A, rather. Uh, we uh, both cover uh, the Illinois area together. He works with all students from Chicago, and I work with students um, outside of Chicago. So uh, let's get started here and give you a little bit of information on Webster. So we are located in Webster Groves, which is a residential suburb of St. Louis, about 2,400 full-time students altogether. So this is not a large um, university situation. In fact, we have, uh, most of our classes are, are capped at 25. We don't have any lecture hall classes. Really could have lecture hall classes if, if, if we wanted to, because those facilities really just don't exist on campus. We have about hundred different academic majors spread out over five colleges and schools. Uh, in particular, we have a wide variety of fine arts and communications majors. I'm going to highlight those uh, a little bit, uh, but we also have an amazing study abroad program. Study abroad is a pretty big element to what we do, and I'll talk about that uh, in a little bit. Here's some admissions information for you. We're on what's called rolling admissions, so we, that simply means we process the applications as they come in, so we don't have a, a hard deadline necessarily. We prefer that you apply by January 1st, but we will certainly accept applications after that. In fact, we're still accepting uh, applications from seniors, but uh, you know, the sooner the better with anything in, in the college applications process. So we put January 1st out there. 
We are test optional. Here's some data here in terms of what our middle 50% is, uh, just to get, uh, give you an idea of those who do submit test scores. Basically what the statistics mean is we have 25% of our incoming um, freshman class scored lower than a 21, but 25% scored higher than a 28. And then the 50% were in this middle range here, 21 to 28. So a little bit different from an average, but it's more of a statistic that you can kind of look at to kind of give you an idea of, of what exactly the student body looks like. Our overall acceptance rate is 78%. And if, if you're interested in art, dance, music, or theater, there is a um, secondary audition or portfolio process that you have to go through. Speaking of the fine arts, um, I did wanna highlight the, that area there. So it's, it's a very comprehensive um, fine and performing arts program here at Webster. These are all actual majors for us. So they're not emphases or they're not design your own major. So you can actually get a full blown major in sculpture or printmaking or ceramics. Um, you could get a, a BM degree in composition or songwriting or musical technology. On the theater side of things, we have a nationally ranked conservatory of theater arts. And you can do anything from costume design to uh, musical theater to sound design, stage management, and one of only a handful of wig and make makeup programs uh, in the country. So all of these, not only do you have to be admitted academically, but then you would have to do an audition or a portfolio review for specific acceptance into those programs. <clears throat> now, here's our school of communications as well. This program is very comprehensive for us. We have everything from animation to film production to video game design, script writing, sound recording, and engineering. So again, very comprehensive. We love the fact that we have all of these programs because they are all related, and that's very important. Um, if you're going to be a filmmaker, you have to know a little bit about audio production. So we offer that. Every film or every TV production that you see starts with the script. So our students take the script writing classes, animation, digital media, all of these are related. And the most important thing is you're in these programs right away. So as a freshman, you're gonna to touch this equipment. You're gonna be in that program right away. You're not just gonna to have to wait and take two, you know, two years of general classes before you get to what you really wanna do. Uh, we get you in there right away. And then I did just wanna to briefly touch on two of our College of Arts and Sciences because uh, as a comprehensive liberal arts school, we have all these majors that you would expect a college to have from the sciences to English to a wonderful creative writing program, a fascinating program in international human rights all the pre-professional philosophy, all of that is in our College of Arts and Sciences. So we have that available as well too. I did mention study abroad. Study abroad is a very important element at Webster University. We are an international institution with a, with a global reach. And so we really encourage our students to study abroad and we make it easy for them to study abroad using our free airfare program. So we will pay for your plane ticket to go abroad. If you go to one of our international campus, we actually um, you actually don't have to worry about transferring grading scales or um, you know, paying in the local currency because you're still at Webster, you're just in a different location, so you're still a Webster student. So anyway, a very comprehensive study abroad program. We're consistently ranked uh, among one of the top colleges in the country for study abroad, uh, and we're very happy about that. Here's our tuition, financial aid, and, and scholarships. So um, one thing that's really important, we do not charge in-state, out-of-state tuition. So it's the same amount, whether you're from Missouri, uh, Illinois, Texas, Florida, wherever, it's the same amount there. Um, we do have some talent-based scholarships available for art, dance, and music. We also have a pretty comprehensive scholarship program, anywhere from $13,000 to $19,000. Generally speaking, if a student has a 2.8 grade point average, they will qualify for some type of academic scholarship. So we also have a leadership scholarship available for $2,000. And then we do have full, full tuition chancellor scholarships available if you meet those criteria uh, to apply for those. And we also have full tuition scholarships uh, available for uh, diversity students as well too. So like a lot of smaller private schools, we have a lot of financial aid to give out. Um, and so you just have to kind of access the process and, and go you know, and fill out the forms and see what you might be eligible for. A few examples of what our graduates are, are, are doing uh, after graduation. Uh, we have recording engineers in Nashville and Los Angeles and, and everywhere else. Um, we, 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 have, uh, we have Eileen Collins, who was our first space shuttle, uh, who, uh, first female space shuttle commander. Um, Kimberly Stewart was an executive producer uh, that did Manchester by the Sea. That's Matt Damon next to her because he, uh, he was in that production. Uh, we have Broadway Tony Award winning artists. That's Leah, who works at Disney. That really is the Oscar for Frozen that she's holding. She worked on that as well as some other production she just got through as the lighting supervisor. 
for Raya and the Last Dragon. Actually, I have several other graduates at Disney as well, too. Alex Vietmeyer is the director of The Late Show with Seth Meyer. So there are a lot of examples uh, there. And then um, we have other examples, professional musicians, a science writer for the New York Times, and a local producer at the, at the um, NBC affiliate there. This is probably my favorite slide because I like to show this to students because it really gives you kind of an idea of who we are, kind of our mic drop moment here. It's really important to have kind of a, the right fit. And so these are the kinds of students that are at Webster. Um, and so as you're looking at your schools, ask yourself what kind of environment you wanna be in. And at least this is what it looks like for Webster. And then finally here, here is the contact information in terms of um, uh, how we um, cover the Illinois area. So please get in touch with us if you do have any questions moving forward throughout the process. Thanks. Great, thank you, Webster University. We are now going to hear from Missouri University of Science and Technology whenever you are ready. Hello everyone, my name is Cindy Welch and I am the Assistant Director of Regional Recruitment at Missouri University of Science and Technology, also known as Missouri S&T. Uh, Missouri S&T is located in Rolla, Missouri, um, and that is about halfway between St. Louis and Springfield, Missouri. Rolla is a small town with a population of just over 20,000 people in the city limits. Um, and then we have about 8,000 students and another 50,000 people coming from nearby communities for shopping and dining um, and entertainment. Rala is part of the South Central Ozark Highlands. So you're gonna find a lot of lakes and rivers and streams where people enjoy fishing and swimming and canoeing, kayaking, camping, all kinds of fun outdoor activities. Um, we have caves to explore. Uh, there's zip lines to maneuver, all kinds of parks. We have about 300 acres of city parks with over 10 miles of walking trails um, and biking trails. And then, um, you know, Rolla also has a really nice balance of what I call urban development with small town charm. So you're going to find everything you need here, um, restaurants and all that type of stuff. Missouri S&T was founded in 1870 as one of the first technological universities west of the Mississippi. Um, so, oops, sorry. So this year, uh, we are celebrating our 150th year. Uh, s and is ranked uh, the number one public engineering university in the nation by pay scale. Uh, we're also ranked the number one university in Missouri for alumni salary potential, the number one public university in Missouri, and number eight in the nation among all colleges and universities for annual return on investment. Another really cool ranking um, is from the National Campus Safety Summit where s and was named the 20th safe, safest campus in the nation. Sorry, my little thing doesn't wanna flip here. Oh, uh, damn it. Well, I'm sorry. My slides aren't wanting to forward here. Ah, there we go. Sorry. Uh, so now it's going to forward one more time. So we have two um, colleges. We have the College of Arts, Sciences, and Business. And in this college, uh, you're going to find a lot of our um, sciences like biology, um, chemistry, and um, physics. We also have all of the um, liberal arts and um, we have, I'm sorry, I've just got myself all flustered here. Um, and we have biology, physics, we have hum humanities and liberal arts, an AACSB accredited undergraduate business program, teacher certification, pre-professional programs such as pre-med, pre-vet, pre-law, and a direct entry program into the St. Louis College of Pharmacy. Um, but we are most known for our College of Engineering and Computing. Um, we have um, 15 different undergraduate engineering majors as well as computer science and geology and geophysics. Last fall, 
uh, we opened a new global engineering program where students can earn two bachelor's degrees in five years. Uh, we they get a bachelor's of science in an engineering field of their choice and a Bachelor of Arts in Interdisciplinary Studies with a minor in French or Spanish. Uh, these students can study abroad one semester and then have an engineering internship abroad another semester. s and offers several unique engineering minors, including biomedical, explosives, and humanitarian. Uh, we also have focused research in several different areas and undergraduates can participate in research as early as their freshman year. s and has over 250 different clubs and organizations, um, so you can get involved in all types of different things. We have 19 student design teams uh, where students can develop problem solving, uh, teamwork, and business skills while designing race cars and robots and rockets and canoes and all kinds of um, fun things like Mars Rover and that type of thing. Uh, s and has 15 different NCAA Division II athletic teams. Uh, they place fifth all time among NCAA Division II colleges and universities for Capital One Academic All-American selections. We also have intramural and club sports and about 23% of our students participate in Greek life. We have theater, band, orchestra, study abroad, and much more. Missouri s and has two career fairs each year, which are among the largest in the Midwest. Uh, last year, over 4,000 different companies uh, actively recruited s and students at career fairs, on-campus events, and through our job portal. The average starting salary for our students graduating with a bachelor's degree is 67520 and students doing internships and co-ops earn about $3,300 per month. s and students go to work for Fortune 500 companies all across the U.S., including Amazon, Google, NASA, SpaceX, and many more. We are still accepting applications for the fall of 2021, and we are test optional uh, this year, and we're going to be test optional for the fall of 22 as well. Uh, you can apply free on our application or on the Common App. Uh, for younger students, um, if you would want to apply the summer after, uh, the summer before your senior year, uh, you can submit your high school transcript, and if you have an ACT or SAT score, and you submit that, um, we can, um, you can get scholarships whether or not you have the test score, but if your test score helps raise your scholarship, we'll grant that as well. So this year, if you um, uh, are taking the ACT or SAT by the June test, then we'll upgrade your scholarship. Missouri s and is affordable and we offer excellent merit-based scholarships. Our most prestigious scholarship for out-of-state students is the Distinguished Scholars Award. It's a competitive scholarship worth $30,000 a year, renewable for four years, um, and we have other scholarships after that as well. So we're currently offering um, campus visits uh, on campus and presentations and Q&A sessions with faculty, current students, and staff that are all virtual. You can find all of our visit options at visit.mst.edu. So thanks for joining us tonight and we hope to see you soon. Wonderful, thank you so much, Missouri University of Science and Technology. We are going to close out the presentation portion of today's event with hearing from the University of Kansas, whenever you're ready. Awesome, thank you so much. Let me share this real quick. All right. Hi everyone, um, my name is Jolie Webb and I am an admissions rep here at the University of Kansas. I graduated in the fall of 2019 with a degree in business marketing and sport management. Um, so I've been at KU, I grew up a KU fan, I'm a third generation Jayhawk. Um, so I'm really passionate about KU and I had a great time personally in my time as a student. Um, so a little bit about what that looks like. We have about 19,000 undergraduate students on our campus. Um, I think that number is a little funny because some people see that and think it's huge. Some people think it's tiny. 
Um, but I really thought it was a perfect mix of having the amenities of a big school, but also having um, those resources, but the opportunities of a smaller school. Um, we have a lot of smaller class sections and um, a lot of one-on-one -on -one opportunities within your academic choice. Um, the average ACT and GPA that are up there are not our admission standards, but we just like to show that so you can see the other types of academically motivated students that you would be around on campus. About 41% of our students come from out of state and Illinois is actually the biggest out of state territory outside of Missouri, um, which is really cool. Almost 5% of our students come from Illinois and the Chicago area mostly. And so that's pretty awesome. Um, a little bit over a quarter of our students identify as students of color. That's a number that's been raising the past couple of years, um, but definitely something that is important to us as a university in Office of Admissions um, to be a place that everyone feels comfortable, everyone feels safe and wants to come and get a really awesome education. So up next, maybe. Yeah, I think it's doing it. Um, we are located in the city of Lawrence. Um, it is a top 10 college town and not shot just by my own standards. That's somebody else as well. Um, we have about 90,000 people that live in the city of Lawrence. And it's a little bit how I talked about the campus. Um, it's a really good mix of big town amenities with small town vibes. Um, so you kind of feel at home wherever you go in Lawrence, but you know, there's a Starbucks on every corner. There's three targets, you know, you'll have everything that you need in the city. Um, there's about 500 miles of hiking and biking trails around something called Clinton Lake, which is about 10 minutes off campus, my personal favorite spot in Lawrence. Um, it's huge. You can rent paddle boards and kayaks, stuff like that, and actually go out on the water from our recreation center. Um, I found the perfect place to put up a hammock, watch the sunset, read a book. Um, so if you like to be outside, great options for that. There's some incredible food in the city of Lawrence. Um, also the number one live music destination between Denver and Chicago. Um, so that's everything like small local bands. Um, I personally saw Rascal Flatts, people like Chance the Rapper, all sorts of stuff in my time here. And so if you like music, it's a really, really great place to be. Um, another big benefit of where the city of Lawrence is located is we're about 20 minutes from the capital in Topeka and 40 minutes from downtown Kansas City. So educationally, that gives you the opportunity to do internships and do things while you're taking classes. So you can take your classes in the morning and be in Kansas City by the afternoon to make those connections, do that networking and have that experience while you're a student. Um, it's also just fun to be close to Kansas City. Um, the season, or there's the Chiefs, the Royals um, in Sporting Kansas City for my sports people. There's great music down there as well, also great food. Um, and there's a great international airport in the city of Kansas City as well. So for out-of-state students and people that are wanting to study abroad, that's a really, really great option for them. Um, we have over 400 fields of study, which I know sounds crazy, um, but that is everything that's involved in all of our smaller schools. And so that's everything from the School of Engineering, Architecture and Design, the School of Business, um, College of Liberal Arts and Sciences, Journalism, those are some of our bigger ones. Um, something that's really cool about our education is we are a tier one research institution and a part of something called the AAU, um, which helps us, I don't know why these are flipping, I'll go back to them once I start talking about this. Um, but that helps, we have some really, really incredible research opportunities for you to do. Um, and that's hands-on, you can start as soon as you walk on campus as a freshman, which is really cool. Um, but there's also some really incredible people in the classroom actually teaching the courses that y'all will be taking. Um, a couple examples in the School of Engineering, one of our professors actually is a co-founder of Google Earth and Google Maps and now came back to KU um, to bring that knowledge and to do some more research. And then another one in our Film and Media Studies Department, uh, one of our professors named Kevin Wilmot won an Oscar last year for a screenplay that he wrote with Spike Lee called The Black Klansman. Um, so no matter what department you're in, you're gonna have somebody of that caliber in the classroom teaching you. Um, the other thing I wanted to touch on is something we call the Jayhawk identity. So that really is what it means to be a Jayhawk. Um, teeny tiny history, I'll make it super brief, um, but the Jayhawk isn't a real bird. It's actually tied back to the Civil War. Um, the people in the state of Kansas fighting to keep Kansas free state were called Jayhawkers. Um, the city of Lawrence was a location of one of the worst battles in the Civil War. So when the Lawrence was building itself back up, that's when KU was created in 1865. And that's why they named KU the Jayhawks. Um, and so that identity and that uh, realization of how um, those Jayhawkers, what they believed, is really interwoven into the history of KU as a whole. 
um, to really get involved with some of those things on campus. Um, we have over 600 uh, organizations and clubs and organizations you can be a part of, uh, which again, that number sounds a little absurd, but that's everything from uh, affinity groups like Black Student Union, Spectrum KU, I'm a group for students that identify as LGBTQ+, so affinity groups to professional organizations like um, School of Business fraternities, uh, women in engineering, things like that, all the way to some more fun stuff. Um, I personally was a part of Greek life. I had an on-campus job working for Kansas Athletics. Um, I was in an acapella group that we competed in ICCAs, like in Pitch Perfect. Um, so there's all sorts of stuff, no matter what it is, that really kind of fills your cup up outside of the classroom. There'll be opportunities to get involved in that um, on campus. Here's some dates and deadlines. Um, our application is still open for fall of 2021, but our scholarship deadline has passed. Um, our scholarship deadline is December 1st with an early action deadline of November 1st. So any juniors, um, that's when you should kind of be focusing on getting an app in by with us. Um, we have our application both on our website and on the Common App um, options for that. And for my seniors, really important date coming up is April 1st. Make sure you update your test scores and GPA with us by then so we can get your scholarships updated. Um, if you wanna follow us on Instagram, here's a little QR code that you can do that. Um, we put some really fun informational content out on that. And that is all of the information I have for y'all. Um, definitely please feel free to let me know if you have any questions. Thanks guys. Great, well, thank you, University of Kansas. I want to also thank all of our presenters today for all of the wonderful information they shared about their various campuses. We are now going to move on to a very brief Q&A portion of today's event. So I'll ask for all of our presenters to join me on video here. And I'm going to go ahead and share my screen very briefly. I don't think it's updated here. There we go. All right. So to get started here, the question is, what advice would you give someone going through the college search process? We're going to go in the same order. So I'm going to kick this question first to the College of St. Benedict and St. John's University. Hi, everyone. Uh, welcome back. Well, first be willing to punt because my screen didn't show and in college, you'll have to learn to just go with it a lot of times. Um, but my advice, hopefully you got a sense that we're your typical admissions office representative. So get to know your admission reps when you receive that text or email or phone call. There's not a robot behind that. It's an actual person who wants to help you with your search. So reach out to us and we're your main connection to everyone on campus. Great advice. Washington University in St. Louis. Yeah, um, along those same lines, you know, make the most out of your interactions um, with a university that you're interested in. Um, there, we all have websites where we have very extensive lists of our programs and all these different things that we can offer you. And so when you're able to interact with one of us or with a representative from the university, a student, a faculty member, asking those deeper questions to find out what really goes on at that place is so important. Um, for me, as a high school student, I did not want to go to Wash U. I was actively and adamantly against it as a terrible place for me because of just what I saw online. And then I talked to people and I visited and I spent time on campus and I had a chicken tenor quesadilla and I've been there for 14 years. So you never really know what's going to happen at that point. That's why diving deeper and asking those deeper, um, not just surface level questions is so important. That's great advice. Thank you so much. Webster University, what's your advice? My advice would be, as you, as you know, as we're slowly getting back to kind of more normalcy and campus visits are becoming more and more of an option and doing more things, when you set up your camp, <clears throat> when you set up your campus visits to go to colleges, be specific if there's anything specific that you want to do. And what I mean by that is, you know, if you want to come on campus and you want to meet with somebody from a specific major, be sure and request that. If you want to meet with somebody from the history department, if you want to talk to an athletic coach, if you want a, a special tour of a special building or facility, be sure you inquire about that when you set up your campus visit. If you ask for a campus tour, that's what you'll get, and that's fine. But you also may want to do some of these other things. So make the most of your campus visit. If you want to do something specific while you're on campus, make sure you request that when you set up the visit. Great advice, thank you. Uh, Missouri University of Science and Technology, what's your advice? 
You know, a lot of students uh, tend to not apply very early and they miss out on a lot of deadlines. So um, first of all, think about all the schools that you want to apply to, contact the admissions counselor, ask for the different deadlines, and then apply early. I recommend that all students apply before their senior year even gets started so that they have the most time to apply for additional scholarships, um, go on those campus tours, that type of thing. So don't wait until the last minute. Sure, you might be able to still get in, but you might have lost out on some scholarship deadlines and things like that. Absolutely, thank you. And then we'll have the University of Kansas close out this question for us. Awesome. Um, we'll definitely repeat everything they all said. Um, the other things I would add is one, ask the hard questions. Um, it's really important that you know what you're getting into and you know where you want to be. And so um, ask questions. We definitely love to hear from y'all. Um, I don't know about everybody else, but hearing emails back and getting those text messages back, having those phone conversations is awesome. Um, but then also I know in this time right now, it's a little difficult, but I think visiting a campus physically is so important. Um, and I know this is cheesy, but you'll know when you get there, if that's a place for you or that's a place that you feel welcome and you feel at home and you feel safe. Um, so definitely, if you can, get your feet on the campus and check it out that way. Great. Well, thank you so much for giving us your expert advice on the college search process. Our next question is going to help us learn a little bit more about each of your campuses. So the question is, what is your favorite event or tradition on campus? We'll start back at the top with the College of St. Benedict and St. John's University. So this goes back to our Benedictine values. Uh, one of my favorite I mentioned was hospitality. So all of our guests leave campus with a loaf of bread. It's a recipe brought over by the monks, um, but we actually host warm bread nights in all of our dorms once a month. And there's uh, Johnny bread and Benny bread and all the toppings that you can think of. It just kind of helps strengthen our sense of community. Great, that's certainly a unique one that I have not heard before. Thanks for sharing. Washington University in St. Louis, what's one of your favorite events or traditions? So my, my first thought was duck and donuts, which is a weekly donut thing, but very clearly my mind is always about food. Um, but my favorite day of the year when I was a student was WILD. So it stands for Walk In, Lay Down. It's our biannual concert. So there's one in the spring, one in the fall. Um, spring WILD is usually the last day of class. So it's the end of April, early May in St. Louis. It's beautiful outside. You have a free concert, you're done with classes, like it's perfect. We've had Childers Gambino, Chance the Rapper, Lizzo, um, the Black Keys came my junior year and it was awesome. Like it's, it was my favorite day of the year every single year, it was awesome. Yeah, it sounds it, thanks for sharing. Webster University, how about you? So once a semester on campus, the student body uh, engages in humans versus zombies, which if anybody is not familiar with humans versus zombies, it's like a giant game of tag. And so these students are like running around with Nerf guns and balled up pairs of socks and shooting at each other. I don't quite get it, which is fine. I'm sure I'm not supposed to get it, but the students really enjoy it. So I would say HVZ -H is probably one of the, the uh, most, most fun traditions we have on campus. Awesome, thanks for telling us a little bit about that one. Uh, Missouri University of Science and Technology, what's your favorite? Well, probably our largest event and the one that most people know about is um, Missouri s and celebrates St. Patrick's Day every year. Uh, we've been celebrating St. Pat's for 113 years and every year it's the best ever. So this is the 113th best ever St. Pat's. Um, normally they paint our streets green. We have a big uh, parade. It's a lot of fun. And leading up to that, even like right after the first of the year, the students gather around the puck um, at noon and say, 90 days until great, you know, the 113th best ever. And, and they, you know, mark that down. And then the week before St. Pat's, they kill snakes. Now they're fake snakes to begin with, but they still kill them. And you have to hit it 113 times this year to kill the snake, so. Wow. That's a lot. <laughs> I know, it is. Thank, thank you so much for sharing with us about that. And we will once again have the University of Kansas close this question for us. Thank you. Um, one of my favorite traditions, and I think a lot of people at KU's favorite traditions, um, really centers around KU basketball. 
Um, and KU football sometimes too. Uh, we have division one athletics. And so uh, KU basketball, there's so much that goes on like pregame, um, the rock chalk chant. There's this clap that everyone learns that I don't think anyone truly knows, which is kind of funny. Um, but there's just a lot of stuff. We're really, really, really heavily tradition-based university in a lot of ways. Um, so it's cool that it looks the same for me as it did for my mom, as it did for my grandpa. Um, so really, really cool traditions in that sense. Great. Well, thank you again for sharing these little uh, fun traditions and events that help us get to know a little bit more about your campus and your campus culture. I want to thank all of our presenters one more time for this uh, wonderful information that they gave us about each of their programs. I also want to thank everyone who's joined us today, whether you are catching this live or watching the replay at a later date, we appreciate that you are here. I did put in the chat again one more time the link where this recording can be found in about a week. There is one more session right after today's presentation where you can hear from another set of institutions if there are any that look of interest. Um, but before you go, I'd like to let you know that when you close today's event, there will be a very quick four question survey. We would love for you to give us feedback about today's event. So finally, one more time, thank you to all of our attendees and thank you to our panelists today. Have a wonderful evening, everyone.